Hello, my Laurel companions. Welcome back to episode six of Roadcast, your dedicated road company podcast, hosted by me, Radstar, and co hosted, as always, by my loyal friend, Mr. Octane Pro TV. How you doing, sir? Welcome back, guys. Excited for another show. Yeah, so I wanted to start off the, pod- start off the podcast uh, talking about ranked and just generally how things are going with us and Road Company. I'll let you talk it off. How has your Road Company week been? What's the highs? What's the lows? And how's it all going? Sure. So um, I played uh, this past week uh, a few nights. I had a good time. Um, I, I I think I actually played. You were actually in some of the games on Tuesday. Yeah, the ranked ones. Yeah. When, we, when we played ranked. And I wasn't feeling it, to be honest with you. Um like just wasn't feeling mm-hmm. I I had considered not playing or streaming that night. I was like tired and, and so I just threw back a bunch of caffeine. And I granted, uh I'm not as young as I used to be, we'll put it that yeah. way. But um <laughs> I can always tell, and I don't know if you could tell either when like you're having an off day, yeah. an off night type of deal. And that was exactly what it was. It was like I was I was there, I was in it, but just like wasn't connecting, mm-hmm. wasn't making good plays. Um you know my accuracy wasn't where it needed to be so um i didn't enjoy it as much i mean pre-made was good um yeah we did play against a lot of sweats like it was really surprising um that you know it was a lot more work than what we expected i don't know if our group our group didn't i don't think our group was very much different that night i think the only difference was that night we didn't have one of the people that we had the previous week and we had a little bit higher i think we had um send clack yeah we had in our group yeah versus insane shane the previous week mm-hmm. um i think send clack was higher i think he was in diamond or yeah or, yeah i think yeah. he was in diamond. High, high diamond so so i think it you know it, i think overall our group's mmr overall rating was higher so you would expect a little bit sweatier but uh it's been good rogue's been good um i have a greater uh respect for rogue when it comes down mm-hmm. to game performance after I played Realm Royale on Friday. Yes. Um, it's just like, oh man, it's like Rogue. People don't realize how well Rogue runs versus some of these other high res games. Um, so, no, it was good. It's been enjoyable. Uh, but let's talk about you and Ranked. Um, yeah. Last time we had talked on the show, we were talking about you were looking into a making another account, mm-hmm. grinding your way to 30, and then taking it from there. And I know you've been doing a great job with your YouTube series. So, kind of. Yeah. Lay the land here for us. Yeah, so uh, so it started Solo Key to Rogue. By the way, <laughs> and I will mention this, getting a fresh account to level 30 as somebody who is level 400 and something <laughs> is really painful. It's like, it, it's <laughs> like when, when you see that new level 30s, you think, oh, you know, they're so new to the game. You know, they have no place in ranked. Mm-hmm. Bumped up to 50. That's like, I'm pinned that it should be bumped up to 50, 50 probably. <laughs> but then I'm, I'm playing, I'm trying to grind to level 30 and it was just slow and sluggish. And I'm like, I'm literally... Oh literally just running strike out blasting music i have no game audio and i'm just lancer <laughs> pressing out and just roll reloading everywhere and it's like that was wow. that was that was me um for for a couple of days trying to get to level 30 and it was just it was way harder than i thought it'd be but then i did what get were you what oh. were you sorry Derek, what were you playing so for those of mm-hmm. our audience that are doing the one to 30 right now yeah. more to the game what are what game mode are you playing in order to maximize the max amount of experience to yeah. get the 30 fastest so i actually was going to do a video on this based off of this <laughs> um yeah. but i decided not to because of when i tested it the results were really un, un, un like just, uh, just uh, not, uh, it doesn't matter it is about really? it is I thought about it was always demo it yes and no so it is you get more xp for the amount of time you spend in the game right you also get a win bonus so that's Ooh. important the win bonus is important you have to win the game otherwise it's just longer of course um but essentially whether you spend 14 minutes in strikeout or 14 minutes in demo you're gonna get the same amount of xp pretty much like it's hmm. it's like i think it's one xp per three seconds i think is what i worked out the math to be sometimes it's like like point two or every 2.9 seconds sometimes hmm. it's every 3.1 seconds but it's around that okay. that mark of, of when i took my xp and the amount of time played and took the average of it all like literally every game was like about one xp per three seconds uh that you spend so in you game. want you want almost demolition seven seven six games then yes so that gives you the max amount yeah i think you but can you get in can you get in two strikeout matches at that time <laughs> exactly exactly so it's like is it is it you either i think have to do one long demo game Mm-hmm. or th- like a quick strikeout game is the way I, I was seeing it is yeah. they that's the best maximization of like time i think is either a really mm-hmm. long demo game okay. or a really quick strike game and as 
a level 400 player going against, going up against generally level like 30s like I felt like strikeout was probably just better although you know what that changed yeah. it, the the my difficulty of opponents changed around level 15 about around that level so especially level 21 when i hit 21 i was around level with level 400s again in strikeout um yeah and like 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 sweaty people right consistently like it it got back to that level so i don't know whether the game like recognized you like hey you no 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 or um (laughs) whether it was just you know his strikeout matchmaking you know you're on they're on let's do it together um yeah, no, so that was that was the grind to level 30. That itself could have okay. been a nice 20 part series, honestly, that I, I didn't really record. That, that was that was pain. Off um, the top of your head, sorry to no. interrupt again, but off the top of your head, how many games do you think you put in between 1 and 30? Like, estimate any ideas? I can tell you, any... it was about 24 hours. It was about okay. 20, 22 uh, hours worth of in game time. Okay, so at that rate, you're probably getting three games in an hour. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say like 70, about, se- right? 75 games. That'd probably be a, a fair amount. 75 games. Somewhere like okay. over in 10 minutes, okay. you know? I'm just trying I'm just trying to think for our, our newer audience yeah. checking out the podcast, trying to think through like grinding to 30, yeah. what they have their crosshairs on. So, okay, good to know. Yeah, but yeah, about 75 games, I'd say, is pretty fair. Assuming you're winning most okay. of them. So maybe like 100, between 75 and 100. Okay. Let's go with that. Okay. That's, that would probably be about right. Um, and then you get to the wide doors of ranked. And I... Wanted to do my very first placement game uh, for for a recording, so I recorded it, of course. Uh, got absolutely stomped. Absolutely stomped. Wasn't even close. Like I I I got I, I got stomped. It was just it was okay. it was awful. Like it wasn't even a, like a contest. I don't remember being against anyone I knew, but I it was it was definitely not a great experience of just like look okay. they just steamroll my team like constantly. A C four would come out and blow up three members of my team, and I'd be there. Like, oh no, they'd be stacking and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. it's that rinse and repeat of they're doing the exact same thing and was expecting something different to happen, and that was just it was like I couldn't I just couldn't do anything. There was just nothing I could do don't at that you, point. Don't you it's interesting that uh, lower level player, or newer players seem to cluster so much. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. they stack a lot versus, uh, and, and and maybe uh, maybe our audience mm. sees this as well. You're more experienced players. You're kind of spread out, almost parallel across. You're pushing mm-hmm. together. Or you're coming sideways on the map. Uh, I find that very often. Like if I get into yes. viewer games, which I do once a week on my stream, um, I will yell at my team, "Stop stacking!" Yeah, like, because like C4 and you're done. Mm-hmm. Like the round's mm-hmm. over, guys. Yeah. So, okay. No, no, hundred percent. I it's, it's actually it's one of two things. It's either that they stack together, or they completely split across the map. They're the two things that happen. Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of the two, but. The, yeah. That you're right. There's no like comp. I've seen the comp level stuff, but like, there's no like movement of like you know what we're all pushing around the same way, but we're all mm-hmm. kind of like staggered and holding different angles. Like you know, and the one that comes to mind is like Icarus A site as you push around that corner on the attack, and you have you normally someone goes down to patio, someone goes into the cart, someone maybe watches the flank. Mm-hmm. There's none of that. There's because this is the map I had the first game. There's three people running towards the the little short on on A, and then a talent oh. throws a C4 around there three times in th- for three rounds and blows you all up, and you ex- and you wonder why I'm left alone oh. like crying in the corner. So that game never got <laughs> that, that game that game never got uploaded. Uh, then the second game. Well, why, why why didn't that game get uploaded? Because that is content. It is accurate. It's I true. I have a I have a rule when it comes to the video. Okay. that i've learned and that is i have no issue uploading a loss no issue uploading okay. a loss at all happily upload a loss sometimes i suck sometimes teammates suck and that's a what? true experience right what? but i never want to put out bad content and i feel like just mm. watching me watching me go forward and then hear boom and then i go i'll try and maybe get a kill or two and then it's like round over for seven rounds in a row isn't going to be entertaining i mean maybe, <laughs> there's, there's a small niche of people who are like entertaining but that isn't i want to watch that, I it, that isn't necessarily educational content. Like I can't really sure. talk about stuff. Sure. So that's that's where I draw the line. I'll happily like if it's if it's like a three seven and we lose, mm-hmm. if there's good content there, it's either entertaining or uh, informative in some way, okay. then I'll do it. Like uh, th- this takes me on to actually no, this is the stream. So then I uploaded my third placement game. Nothing special about the game necessarily, but I got it was the first essential placement game that was viable to show. But okay, and I think it was it was a win. So I was two. No, sorry, the second game I didn't say. Uh, that was uh, a two round surrender. They had an AFK, like, you know? oh. <laughs> and then and they were my first two Sonic games of just absolute trash and AFK a second one. So I wasn't very hopeful. Oh. Um, then played the third one, uploaded that one, all good. And then I streamed on Friday. I streamed for mm. seven hours only solo queue. Um, mm. and the turnout for that stream, by the way, was incredible. Like people really, really were interested in that. 
Um, wow, yeah, good. I think like then I think average like ninety five viewers uh, throughout the seven hours wow. there, which was just r- ridiculous in my eyes. I, was, I looked at I'm like, people want to see me suffer. That's what I took from that, and <laughs> and there was a real mismatch of games. Some were like you know, I, some were kind of stompy. Some were like me stomping and my team really trying to make it hard for me. Some I just, were just losses. You know, there was pure losses of hey, there was nothing we could do, and <laughs> I found that was a really common theme that day of i would say i probably won most of them probably won about 85 percent of the games i played there um which was really good my placements by the way i went seven three uh i got placed gold one i should have said that so yeah i got placed gold one and i went seven three so trying to remember i ended up seven two oh seven two and then the team surrendered that's Mm -hmm. right seven two and my team surrendered that third one and i got gold two Okay. So gold two. Uh, yes, because then I, sorry, okay. I quickly got it was like the top. Of, yeah, quickly yeah. got the gold one, and then we played it. Okay. Yeah. So that so it it it, it is interesting because our scoring was super similar, mm-hmm. seven three at the end. Yeah. Um, I would say our skill sets different. You're definitely a higher skilled player than I am, but we still ended up very very similar. Yeah. You know, in that which is which is unique. So mm-hmm. how did you find comms? Um, was oh. solo? Was <laughs> non-existent or was it like? what it was a yin or yang it was either like crazy good or just like nothing it was non-existent my end i didn't okay. have them on um and oh, you did? Okay. no you yeah yeah I, I i i so i was talking about it with, with chat at the time because obviously i have chat to talk to so like there's there's yeah. the interaction there thankfully uh, and a lot of people say in chat actually how do you do this and i say i do it because i have you guys you are literally keeping me <laughs> sane right now being able to talk to chat and just like have an interaction oh, with people helps a lot yep. um but yeah, no, so I, I turn them on every once in a while. Um, the first time I turned it on, someone's mic was just like, had an issue and it was just like screeching oh, the entire time. Yep. So I'm turned it off. And then the next game I turned it on and just to say something, I, I, I push talk on, so obviously so I've talked to chat and stuff and, and, yeah. I, and I just said, yeah, guys, it was like, we're literally round one and my team, it was Icarus. I played so much Icarus, by the way. Map rotation, like, numbers are not... They choose they're which maps out. they want every day. Oh. They're like, you know what, it's Tuesday, let's have Icarus, like, as, like, 50%. So I played Icarus, and all my team rushed around A, and, like, all the way around the long, all the way into the patio, on defense, and just died. And I was like, Ooh. I go into push talk, I'm like, yo, guys, you know, let's, let's play slow, we're on defense, let's do this. And I got yelled at. This, I, like, I can't even repeat it. I can't even repeat <laughs> the things that were said to me in that like short, <laughs> like two seconds before I went, okay, turning chat back off because that's not okay. Um, so yeah, and then I basically had it off unless I knew somebody. Unless I knew okay. that I've been on comms with someone before or yeah, yeah. I, I did, like, I ran to Jolly on my team at one point, uh, which was heaven. I ran to a guy called Doom that I know, uh, Andresy. Uh, so I ran to a few people that I knew uh, during the games. Also went against the people that I knew um, which is interesting, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, so that's what I use comms. I didn't use comms, um, but generally, yeah, I have them off. Um, which I don't uh, blame you as a content creator, especially yes. if you're streaming too. Like, yes, I used to when I did less rogue, it was more realm royale mm-hmm. previous rogue, and I do like duo cues or squads. At that point, I actually like didn't I muted everyone I played with, yeah, because I was unless I unless it was someone I played with before mm-hmm. or I, I had that relationship with them. Because it was always that, like, I don't know what that person's going to say. And, mm-hmm. like, it's my channel. I'm responsible for it. So exactly. I understand. I under, I definitely understand where you're coming from there, uh, which I think is good. Um, so end of rank solo. What's your over? I know you yes. did a YouTube series on this, but mm-hmm. what's your overall hypothesis of let, let's let's ask the, the, the age old question here. Mm-hmm. Is it easier to rank in pre-maids than it is solo? One hundred and fifty percent. Like it's like. <laughs> whether you because you ha- can go up against the same people and that's what it is and so if you're going up against the same people would you rather have a teams you know and have comms with or randoms who just are just random randoms is the best way of explaining random teammates and it's not just because you don't know them it's because of the plays they make and they are just random it's just like it's it's there's no thinking uh and that's that's the biggest issue and actually something that i i want to touch on a little bit with with, uh, with some of my content is just thinking like how to think better in rogue companies. Why well, I actually did my, I did a movement video really recently of how to improve your movement. And the biggest Probably tips I say that. throughout that is think about where you're going. Why are you going? What angles are you exposed to? Because you can't move well unless you know where you're heading and what's around you and being aware. And that's kind of what yeah. I want to start drilling into the player base a little bit more is 
you've got to think. This isn't an autopilot game. No game is really autopilot. You have to be thinking and making and adapting. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of uh, is my hypothesis. Is it's definitely pre-made is so much easier. It's so much easier. Uh, I would rather go up against a sweaty four man as a pre-made than go up against a set of four randoms as a set of four randoms. Like I would rather so, take that. If that makes so sense. So that in mind, pre-made versus a solo grind. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel the queue system needs to be overhauled to separate these or to match them together in some capacities so that pre-mades go against pre-mades or pre-mades that are smaller pre-mades, two and two get mm -hmm. put together, stuff like that? Or do you think the existing system is where it should be? I think many people will stop playing ranked and not enjoy it because of Sorry, Ricky. Uh I do not okay. think that... Uh, this is basically what I said is, is nobody enjoys the experience. Uh, I had do because I have, as I said, I have people to do it with. I have chat to do it with. Uh, and that's such a, such a blessing. But what, what the, the, the average player base trying to deal with player on team comms who are toxic, who don't have to worry about content, who don't have to worry about just having to mute them, who do try and communicate, who, you know, do put in like loads of effort, they do suffer for it. Um, and and yes, yeah, so I, I definitely should be specific sp them. I've said this honestly since they let's talked about ranked is you have a solo duo queue. So like those two are combined. I think it's okay to have a duo versus a solo. I think one good solo can outplay a good duo um, if they're you know they're, they're locked in enough. And I think you have a team queue. You have a, a four man queue. I don't think there's really a place for three mans uh, in this game because then you've got a solo going with it and that just doesn't work. Um, so you have to split it as one and twos and then fours. Um, and I think honestly that's the the only way that this works. But you have to have a bigger player base for that. So that's the yeah. that's the biggest drawback is there's not a big enough player base to do that. Also, the matchmaking just doesn't work. Like again, I'm going up against people who I know are rogue rank. Jolly, yeah. Jolly rogue. I don't think Jolly's hit rogue yet, but you know there are no, people he's who not yet because we played. Yeah. I think he's yeah. diamond. Yeah, we have played last week. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I'm in placements. I'm in you know I'm in gold. You know, yeah. like in theory I shouldn't be played with him or, or you know whatever. I think I'm actually I mean I'm I'm in plat five now. That's where I got to within yeah. like plat five and a half. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so it was <laughs> it was just yeah the matchmaking needs a little bit of tweaking honestly i don't mind it again as someone who should be in rogue rank i don't mind it but for the people who aren't you know it's it's just it, i imagine that's an unpleasant experience um and yeah so that's 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 my overall hypothesis on circuit ranked i'm looking forward to doing more of it uh i really enjoyed it chat really enjoyed it um i'm waiting for that one stream that is 12 losses in a row uh i know that's coming uh i know that if I carry on the way I did that, I've probably got like three more streams in me before it. it I, I'll get rogue, uh, honestly, because I said I have like an eighty-five percent win rate. I won pretty much every game, um, which was which was great. Um, but I'm I know there's gonna be a day where it's like you know twenty percent win rate, ten percent win rate, zero percent win rate before I just oh. before I just alt F for uh, OBS um, and, and and leave the stream. So that's kind of that's my take. Yeah, I think what I'd love to see moving forward is the fact that if you remember our last rank system versus this one. Mm -hmm. I think every patch we need to have something in that patch that is tweaking the current system yeah, to works. make it better. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's definitely necessary. I think, as you said, the game doesn't have a large enough player base, at least to our knowledge, to separate the queues, solo yeah. duo and that team. So with that being said, it should be the same queue, but the algorithm behind it that's matching should keep that uh, in, the, in mind. Yeah. So if there isn't a game, if you have some solos and duos, they should not play against that pre-made group and yes that means longer queue times but no one is sitting here complaining no. that i have seen complaining about queue times so that being said and i know everybody would rather wait longer for a better match so i think that is something that we need to continue to see each patch is made adjustments to xyz or added this into it or added this into it like that's what i expect to see yeah i don't like the mentality of putting out a system like ranked and then okay we'll, re we'll revisit it next next season yeah i was like wait like so you let it run for i don't know it's just i would rather see them continue to build on it versus yeah. just a giant overhaul every three months yeah well especially when, when when they know it's not working right it's not the best system it's not the best that it mm -hmm. can be you know they, they obviously yeah. and we've talked about this a lot uh probably not on roadcast but like before we've always said they rushed it you know they, they rush ranked right. rush you know yes. you know it's just mm -hmm. it was put out because it was demanded and they they made a mess system back in season zero they built upon it for season one, but when you know it's still not perfect, you as you said you can just keep tweaking it. Win, I don't mind. I don't mind. Like it doesn't yeah. change what rank I am if you change the matchmaking halfway through the season. You know, I still have to do play ranked and and, and do well. 
Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you on that. Um, absolutely, I think tweaking it and making it better, making matchmaking better. I heard, I don't remember, it might, it might have even been you, but I'm not sure. Someone said, do something like, so four minutes is the current cutoff. When it hits four minutes, you can just get placed with anybody. Um, and then someone, and someone suggested, I said, I don't remember who, said, suggested that maybe at four minutes, you drop down one bracket. So you, if you're on Rogue, you can play with Platinums mm. instead of just Diamonds. Yeah, yeah. If uh, six yeah. minutes, yeah, exactly. Six minutes, you drop down to playing with gold. Seven minutes, you drop down to playing with silvers, and just bring it down that way. Some sort of thing like that. Like, you know, I, I, I don't know how hard coding is and, and game design is. Honestly, like, I mean, I feel like the design part, the ideas, is ideas, right? The actual putting it into place. I don't know how hard that is, um, but that would be my <laughs> idea. You know, is just to keep dragging. No, it down. I think that's a really. That was not me. I can't. I can't okay. take credit for that. But I, but I do feel that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think it addresses both ends yeah. um keep it, keeping people playing around the same mm -hmm. skill level and then as time goes on keep taking that into a factor and getting you into a match so i definitely think there's definitely value there which is good because and as you and i both know just because you're rogue ranked doesn't mean that you're good at the game definitely not. honest here definitely not. it just means you play the game a lot um and that i think is the stigma that they need mm -hmm. to shake loose 100%. that needs to really separate itself because until then it, it's for example like it's just because this is where i've come from it's like when you're looking at csgo you don't go ahead and look at the top ranked people and go eh, it's just because they play a lot you're yeah. like no that person is dang good yeah. like holy cow and they are so i think that's where we need to get this um and where i'd love to see it go with ranked uh moving forward but other than that yeah rank's been good i'm, I'm playing it again nice. on tuesday nice. um, we'll be playing ranked again on stream as i say i always i only do it one day a week We'll probably get in four or five games based off of the time period. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll report back next week. Yeah, nice. Yes. Yeah, I would uh, so so this more soda cube by then so I can report how painful that was. I'll try, I'll try and capture my win rate exactly so we know. Um, yeah. It'll be like 2% next time, I'm telling you. Uh, but no, so the, <laughs> what I want to talk about as well on this podcast uh, was actually just tournaments. Uh, we spoke about it before. The competitive scene, a lot has happened since the CMG 10K. That like was like the big event uh, that went past mm -hmm. like sort of uh, two weeks ago. It was the big CMG 10K, Q Hamsters one, which was Frag Out, Gronky, Bobster, and Cool Matt. Um, and then about a few days later, three more big tournaments were announced uh, for over a thousand dollar prize pools. Um, not to mention all the little tournaments that are being popped up, which community based tournaments, draft tournaments by uh, content creators and things like that. So I want to just talk about a little bit about the scene. Um, obviously, you and I are involved in it. I sometimes play the cast you have such a long history when it comes to grassroots tournaments and high res and things. So I want to get your hot take on, on all of this. Um, but given everything we've heard about these big tournaments, and I'll quickly run through them. We have the another CMG 10K immediately after the last one, which was kind of like, uh, which was like, wow to me. Like, cause I, I was considering playing in it and I was like, oh, I just, I can't like more, more Saturdays in a row where I have to like put 30 seconds lay on my stream. It's just painful. Then there was, there's an antimatter uh, 1K tournament. Uh, which is powered by Facebook, uh, which uh, was quite interesting. I think Dome's even picked up on like Facebook putting money into Rogue Company uh, is a you know a potential good step. I know Antimatter because um, I'm I'm casting in in the uh, in their tournament for them. They are uh, big in Halo, fancy uh, fancy. fancy. Uh, they're big in Halo. They're really really big in Halo. Um, still do a lot of Halo stuff. Uh, and now they're moving to Rogue Company because they're looking to add essentially another sort of CMG competitor. If that makes sense, like yeah. they yeah. want they want to sort of balance that field with them. Uh, and then we also have a 3K strikeout tournament, which I just don't know much about. Uh, I this sort of blasted it, through it me. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot said on it. Um, mm -hmm. That you're talking about the skill shot one. Yeah. Yeah, that one surprised me too. Um, I saw it, and I think I had thrown it to you. I was like, mm -hmm. "Hey, you should play in it." Type of deal. Yeah. Uh, and because I was like, I don't even know who's commentating this, and then. I saw High Res retweeted it, uh -huh. which those of you guys not familiar on the history there, Skillshot used to be a part of High Res uh, for a few years as their production company uh, ran their tournaments, all that types of stuff, and then they broke off. Uh, and my understanding is a healthy manner and and went their own direction mm -hmm. with uh, several of their founding um, employees actually that started High Res moved there and and went that direction. And uh, yeah, so I I heard it went well. Uh, I saw it was streamed. Uh, yeah. It didn't have a huge following to it, but uh, I was kind of happy to see the strikeout go that yeah. way. Yeah, true. Uh, you know, to see some tournaments out there that are bigger than just Johnny's putting together a little strikeout tournament yeah. on a Saturday afternoon. 
Exactly, exactly. So what, what's, what's your overall hot take then on, on, on what this means for the competitive scene, but also just the engagement scene for yeah. viewers? Because, yeah. uh, you know, esports is a big industry. It's a big hook for players. They want to watch top tier players and, and, and my, I've always loved that in games I've played. Um, so what's, what's, what's your hot take on it? You, you think it's a, it's a good oh, thing? I, 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 I am so happy you asked. Um, <laughs> I, I am, and, and people have heard me talk about this on my own streams and, and when people mm -hmm. ask me about it, I am thrilled that Hyra Studios first watch, whatever you want to, Hyra Studios, and then you got first watch mm -hmm. underneath of them and Rogue Company makes first watch. I am super happy. So kudos to Scott Gandhi for holding his hands here. Mm -hmm. um, to just not jumping in like they have in other games of High Risk Studios. Uh, Realm Royale, uh, before that, uh, Paladin, Smite. Mm -hmm. They very much took their marketing spend and they put it into esports. So like mm -hmm. right away, Realm Royale was doing, they had 100K tournaments that they partnered uh. with Keemstar on. Can you imagine Rogue Company the day it went out into um, open beta? going hey we're doing a 100k tournament like Ridiculous. what Ridiculous. Um, so i am I, I think of it like it would be the very same philosophy with like they didn't even have spectator then yeah it was this weird yeah. caveat yeah so i am super happy that they decided to take their marketing spend and spend it elsewhere with some of these mm -hmm. bigger streamers now, granted that's a, a injection of um not organic player base but yeah. it's good and bad but um, I'm very happy about it. And they have done so well not to get involved. And what they're doing is, uh, like with CMG, they are, I don't know how much, I don't know all the details. It's just chatting down the line that they are hmm. helping to financially compensate that. So it's not like CMG is putting out that money entirely yeah. from them. That being said, um, with all these other tournaments popping up, I don't know where the financial support is coming from if it's from high res, mm -hmm. but I like the avenue it's going. It's and this is this is allow this is a healthy avenue to go for me. Um, I am a huge proponent of grassroots. I come from the original competitive StarCraft two scene where like everything was grassroots, and then it turned into these organizations growing. And oh, like it gets to an MLG level. Yeah. Then MLG doesn't exist anymore. But um, high res has done this in the past with other games. Uh, with like ESLs, uh, they would work with other groups to manage and uh, produce them. Mm -hmm. And it's been very successful in that regard. So I'm really happy to see this happening. I think it shows that they are focusing on game development, which is what they should. They're yeah. a game developer. They are not a tournament organization. Mm -hmm. They are not an esports organization. Gotcha. And, and I know a lot of individuals at high res would be unhappy with that statement. Yeah. But let's do a reality check. You mm -hmm. make video games, stick to what you know and stick mm -hmm. to what you're doing. Yeah. And I think when you focus on your game, um, allow others to focus on the, on that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think what would naturally happen is, and I've seen this, I've seen on Scott Gandhi's Twitter and stuff, people have come to him and said, Hey, love hosting tournaments, but here's all the things we need to be more successful. Like yeah. this spectator bug is a problem. This mm -hmm. is the, like, that's what I expect between a, tournament esports or tournament grassroots scene and a developer mm -hmm. so from my perspective i'm thrilled with this um uh, we'll, we'll we'll push the more information on to farther on the conversation regarding like salaries and what this means yeah, and stuff yeah. like that but i want to throw it back to you as to what i said there what are your thoughts on it do you feel i'm right do you feel i'm wrong where are your thoughts and ideas around the grassroots grassroots scene as it currently sits? See, I I, I pretty much 100 agree. I, I love it. I think it's great. Uh, I think that what grassroots offers is an avenue for anybody to get involved, uh, which is it is great. Like I never competed in a game before, and then went to compete in in road company <laughs> in, in in things. You know, I was in qualifiers. I, I almost made it to the 10k. You know, there was there was hope there. There was a dream. It didn't make it, but it was a dream. You know, and that I dream was almost you. possible. Uh, you meet yep. new people. I play, you know, at the moment, I, I play with some of the top players in the game, uh, not like competitively, but just like in their streams and stuff. We'll play ranked together yep. and stuff, and, and I'll carry them as usual. Um, <laughs> as usual. <That's laughs> as usual. Uh, but no, like the, the, the experience as a player and as, as, a, as a viewer watching these, these players is just incredible. I never would have gotten casting had High Res done a big event. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if there were no grassroots yep. tournaments and high res were like, we're doing a $100,000 event a month into the game's life cycle, there was no shot I would have been called on to cast. How, did, how did you get into casting? How did I get into casting? What was the first event I casted? Was it, was Rogue, it Rogue Rivals? Rivals? Was it Rogue Rivals? It was I, Rogue I, Rivals. I played, I played 
I, I, yeah, I you like, have any type of session. I was like, Radthar, you are very good at the analytical, analytical side of this game. Right. You know it very well. And I was like, I want you to come cast. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. You're right. Wow. Okay. It was yeah. Rogue Rivals. I wasn't sure if I did look something how, before look that. Look how far you've come. You it's, blossomed. Uh, I have. Oh, and, it's, and now I like, literally, I, I, I have people asking for me to, to, to cast a lot. And I have to say no, because a lot of people try to set up leagues. Um, yeah. And I am happy to cast a tournament. You get me in for a tournament, diehards tournaments. Uh, you know, any, anything like that. Antimatter uh, got in contact with me for tournaments. Uh, I know there's some other people who do like little tournaments every once in a while. Who are like, yo, are you yep. interested? Um, yep. but I can't do a league. That's the one issue. Is a league is like a big commitment in terms of yep. it's this time every day, every week. You know, for multiple hours. And as a content creator who well, already has no time, exactly. You would exactly. substitute something. Exactly. Which... And that can't be my stream or my YouTube or my time with the bunny. So you know, there's. <laughs> Three priorities. Priority. Exactly. Exactly. Um. Yeah. No. Like, I'd never have gotten casting. And yeah. No. It was very well. So a big thank you to, to Octane host hosting, producing, doing Trying. so much, so much behind the scenes that no one knows about with Rogue Rivals that that you were in is was just mental. Um. But obviously we did as a casting team. I never would have met like Banks and Halorin and and Austin and stuff who, I looked at when casting. I'm like, wow. Especially like especially like for, for everyone like Banks and Halorin really stuck out to me as as two. Like Banks yeah. is such a professional in his. In his desk hosting stuff and and Haloran is so presents himself so well on camera and I just I looked at them like wow like that's that's amazing like seeing them do it and enjoying it myself while doing it was just like so so like passionate for me and as as, as led to what I hope what I hope will eventually be me casting on on a big main stage for a company if a yeah. company gets there it's, that that is the hope obviously like yeah. you know I've Scott knows who I am he's seen me cast he saw me cast the CNG 10K <laughs> when I did that yeah. one by myself uh I was like you know. And you know, I'm I'm in contact with CMG. That you know, there's there's the possibility of floating around there. Um, there's something might happen from that, which is interesting. But we'll we'll see. Um, if anything comes from that. Um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. So so let's let's throw this out there while we keep the conversation on, yeah. going. Not necessarily about casting particularly, no, but, but where my where my mind goes is the fact of. So we have this grassroots stuff going yes. on right now. We got some money getting thrown around the scene. It's nothing to. Um, stake your light your livelihood on it's no. little stuff here and there unless you find um, out <laughs> yeah there you go so um think of so every january mm. high res has their high res expo yeah and they had in the past have had their smite and their paladins um tournaments leagues that have led up to this event mm. and then they have their world's event uh, very early on in, in, in high res's infancy, they had like the Smite World Championship. I think mm -hmm. it was 2012, 2014, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, so let's look to next January. Okay. Now, traditionally, you know, this last one, the high res, um, what they show, the high res showcase, they called it because of COVID, they just did like everything was online. Yeah. Versus before that, the last few years, which I've, uh, I've been going to and, and been invited to mm -hmm. and I've worked at uh, with high res. Uh, they were partnered with DreamHack. So High Res <laughs> was at the DreamHack event. They were about a fourth of the entire DreamHack wow. event. They had two giant stages there. It was casted. It was legit, legit, you mm. know. Um, think uh, Where do you think this goes this January? So most likely we're not out of the woods on COVID. No. So, you know, which as much as everything, you know, is moving quickly, we're not going to be there. Most people aren't going to be hosting these giant events with all mm. these people close quartered. So... Do you think we get to the next expo and there's an event going on um, that they do? They host online. Yeah, it's like invite only. You know what? Where where do you where do you hope this goes between now and January? So end of 2021 yeah. approaches. It's like what? Where are you hoping or do you seeing this at? Because you could and let's be realistic here. Everybody could be like, oh, well, they're gonna host a million dollar road <laughs> company tournament. It's like, yeah. all right, get out of your cloud. Stop it. <laughs> realistic here so what are you thinking i i hope that not a, not a million dollars i hope they put on something big i hope yeah. high res do something under high res for bro company and i honestly hope it's lan um and I, i'll talk about why and i do not think there's an audience um okay i think that's the stipulation uh i think mm -hmm. there will be an audience there will be the players and potentially the casters uh, coming in, but you don't even need the casters at that point. You can do land without casters 
because you could just... Uh, you well, could. I mean, it's you, always you, easier to have. We, obviously, it's, it's way easier. And, and hopefully it will. Uh, we'll see what restrictions are then. If not, I'll be swimming uh, there if I can't fly. <laughs> uh, don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> but um, no, so that, that's, um, that's what I hope. And the reason I think it'll be LAN uh, is because there is way too much going on in the scene right now in terms of hacking, accusing of hacking, that there is no way high res can do an authentic event that is not LAN. They're, they're, you just can't. And I don't, you know, whatever entity you decide to, to, to install for that, make people use, whatever, there's nothing that's going to be more solid than a LAN event. And I think they're going to have to. I don't think high res can do an event at the moment, given just how everything is without LAN. However, mm -hmm. that's my hope. Right? My hope is that that is what happens. My realistic impression is that it won't. I don't think high res will do anything. Um, I think, honestly... A league isn't really in the cards right now, because yeah, with agree. the salaries and things like, and that's all people keep asking for. I'm like, what are you want about? Like, that's like, that's just not possible. Like, they're not gonna pay you. Like, they're not gonna pay you people, right now people, for that sort of thing. People look at it. People look at it one way. Mm -hmm. uh, versus like, hey, I just need, I want money to play yeah, video games. Exactly. Uh, they want to, they want to go from zero to hero in mm -hmm. two seconds without putting in as much time as mm -hmm. as what a traditional scene would have. I do think. So high res has done this in the past. Okay. Um, MLG, I've seen do this as well. Okay. Like MLG did an event where it was super small. Mm -hmm. They invited teams um, that qual. And the hard part is, is like our teams mm -hmm. are not true teams. They're no. not backed by orgs. They're no, not signed that's the issue. contracts. Yes. It's like I get me and three buddies together for this one event, mm -hmm. and then uh, it, it falls apart, and I rejoin another one, and another mm -hmm. one, and another one. So that, that shows the lack of maturity, not necessarily like age maturity. Yeah. Or, it just shows the, uh, the maturity of our, our scene is very young. Yes. Uh, and I'm not talking about age. I'm just talking about the age uh, um, of the scene itself. Yeah. So the challenge there is like if high res was today to go, I'm going to invite 16 teams. Mm -hmm. Well, how, where are you going to find 16 teams that have been together for more than like you're, two weeks? Yeah. You're not going to find one. Like, you know, so, the the challenge there is like everybody wants that to exist not mm -hmm. realizing that well when you go ahead and disband and recreate a team every few weeks you're not helping the scene no so stop it is yeah. the first thing um but they could pull together uh hopefully by january we have a little more, more maturity there and they could pull these teams together bring them on site um and they could very well do this okay. they don't have the facility to do it to my knowledge mm -hmm. right now but when they were partnered with skillshot so maybe they partner with Skillshot. They Skillshot has like the boost, the sound boost. Okay. boost. Yeah. Um, they have the camera setups and everything all already on site. Like okay. that's what they do. Um. So and it's right there in Atlanta. So they could very well host a LAN, um, in that regard, and it could be an invitational only. You know, mm -hmm. they could take the they could take. I know when Realm Royale started to get into the 10K tournaments early on they it was invite only which was a really hard it it, it ruffled feathers in the competitive scene yeah I imagine because so. it, was like, it was like who you knew so there yeah. were a lot of content creators that got into that yeah. that barely played realm royale ever mm -hmm. yeah i mean your like, your ninjas were invited to that your shrouds yeah. all those guys who barely played the game ever mm -hmm. and then what they did was they took they looked at their leaderboards and took like your highest ranking uh -huh. people and yeah. stuff and them. so there's some things they could do here in that. So I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe January is too early in the scene right now mm -hmm. to get to that point. Uh, but it would be really nice uh, to see a yeah. land uh, later on down the yeah. road. I mean, I guess it depends on how just the game development goes. What? So by, by that point, we'll have seven additional rogues. What we have right now are we 24 Correct, rogues? Yeah, 24. Oh. Oh, I did. There's eight rogues they committed to in 2020. Yeah, and we started on 16. Okay, you know yeah. what? You know, okay, you know what? It could work out perfect. Scott said they wouldn't do a so bad, pick and so ban till 25. Yep. That yep. could be taken back to 24. Uh, yep. And host the first LAN event pick and ban phase then there. Mm -hmm. That's not... Because that's what, that's what truly makes it competitive. Oh, 100%. Is, yeah, you is, need pick and ban. Pick and bans and... The fact of uh, not being able to have duplicates on both on both sides. Yes, exactly. That like would that, be yeah, that would be really interesting. So, yeah, I think that's going to change a lot. I think it takes. I'm hoping by the time we get mm -hmm. to picks and bands, 
that uh, the rank system is fine tuned to the point where it's 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 a true yeah. rank system. Yeah. Um, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, completely side pivot note. Go. We didn't really talk about it, but I just thought about it. Uh, how about their announcement on adding three v three wingman? Oh yeah. And custom uh yes. wingman coming as, as well so this is this is completely off the yeah no no but i was like oh we should talk about that hmm. so so any thoughts on i didn't see 3v3 coming at all no me neither like, yeah I was like, oh okay that, 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 I mean, that's interesting to me i'm i'm down uh that yeah i i, I love it I, so wingman's a great mode wingman is wingman offers so much more than people realize even for the competitive scene trial you know try out you know uh, four man teams love to 2v2 each other that's a big thing for four man teams do is they 2v2 each other because then you play off each other and you learn each other and you learn what how you move and how to counter more movement techniques and things like that um and you should build so much there so that in customs allows for that much easier it allows for you to test out new people for a competitive scene uh 2v2 trials i mean i think that's way better than running a rank game with somebody i think um yep. but as just a casual player in in, in that mindset it's great it's fun it's awesome tournaments little grassroots tournaments you know i think uh that is uh the intention for for the tournament uh this weekend with diehard uh that he's he's been talking about and stuff so uh that should be fun um assuming the update are does come out this wednesday how are you guys doing uh that? i don't think we got to talk about it yet i don't know exactly what's uh what 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 what, what the way is gonna be but i think yeah 2v2 2v2 uh wingman is the idea assuming the update comes out if the update doesn't come out well, it's gonna next be. Weekend, right yeah next weekend that's what you and i are doing right say again that the one that you and I are doing? I have no idea. Is this the one that we were talking about with, 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 with Die Hard? I think it's Die Hard is... Is this not the one with the... The 14th, next weekend. The 14th, yeah. Yeah, that's you and I casting that. Okay. Is that you and I casting that? I I, I don't know the details. I, I, I've seen the messages. I, I, I read through them, and I was like, this has confused me. Yeah. I, 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 I'm like I'm like a three-day beforehand guy. Like, hey, what's the plan? <laughs> that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving the I'm leaving the adults to make the decisions. Yep. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I think that, that that is that one. That's the one I have it. That, that I'm, I'm I'm thinking about right there. Um, yes. I don't know what the exact plans that were. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think little things like that are, are great. You know, uh, those sort of tournaments two v two are easy because you only have one teammate you have to find, and that's really nice. Um, rather than having to find three teammates for a demo or a striker or put randoms together where it's just confusing. Um, so yep. yeah, I think I think Wingman's good. I think 3v3 Wingman is just another added step to that. I wonder how it'll yep. play out on maps like District and Depot. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kind of hoping they put a surprise another map in there that's maybe a little bit bigger that'll play that really nicely. I don't know. Yeah. Doubt it, but hopeful. Well, what's, I what's, think what's your take? Be limited time modes. I don't think they're going to be like full time. Yes. So no, I no, you're right. Yeah. 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 So they're just kind of like a little sprinkle in there. I think mm. they're kind of adding to that limited time pool. Yeah. Which is nice. Uh, you know, they're, they're growing that, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Like, I love to get to a point where um, it's not as much as I uh, love arms race. It's not like, you know, we went through that period yeah. where it was like arms race the weekend because they didn't have any other yeah. modes. So this is good. I'm excited for the 2v2. I have always been a huge proponent of these small 2v2 or 3v3 head to head on these yeah. smaller ma uh, maps. Um, looking back to Smite days when I played Smite, uh, I loved. There were a lot of community grassroots tournaments that were on their Joust map, which is a 1v1 yeah. map, that were that were 3v3. Yeah. And so um, I was involved with a group called Smite Tube then, nice. uh, casting for them uh, for months, um, these events. And I loved it. Yeah, you started to have the same players in those mm. in those events. It was every week. And it it was fun. So casuals could get into it. Yeah. But it also had your sweaty, tryhard competitive yeah. players. So like, when they weren't playing in these giant big tournaments, mm -hmm. this was perfect filler yeah. uh, to kind of keep on that competitive edge. So I did really, really enjoy that. Well, you know, what? And, and speaking of that, uh, just very quickly, is, is it's almost exactly what you're doing uh, on your Monday night streams with your Fight Club, um, yep. which you don't talk about. Uh, hey. uh, yeah, which, so if you don't know, uh, you do 1v1 sort of King of the Hill style, winner stays on, um, yep. whoever gets the most wins uh, consecutively, you get the biggest win streak gets a uh, skin coat at the end. I, I think that's the way you've been doing it the last few weeks. Imagine the same way you do it. But you've got some real sweaty people coming that. Um oh, like you know, you forget. you know, you had Domes who's a big gears guy, big row company guy, you've had Revictor yeah. with his teammate, you know, more, more people like from that. And I, I went in there I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna get slapped. I'm under like <laughs> easy skin code. <laughs> uh yeah. and then I just get yeah. slapped. I'm like, wow, like you know, and I love that. You've got your casual players uh on your switches going up against all the best players in the in the yep. game and it's just yep. it's it's interesting to watch you get johnny trying to like sword people it's great like you know it's, yep. a, it's a great time i love that and i think 
adding 2v2 wingman, 3v3 wingman is going to be a great addition yep. to that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm always down for more limited time modes. I really do want them now that they've added wingman into customs though, to spend a little bit of time developing just three maps, three or four maps, and just really get some good 2v2 maps in there. Um, because like I said, gunfight in Call of Duty Warzone was, sorry, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, was one of my yeah. favorite things. It was literally one of my favorite things to 2v2, and they had about nine maps that were on rotation, and they were all unique wow. and all fun, and it was it was literally what I would spend most of my time doing before I jumped into VR. Um, it's just practicing there, because the thinking, it's, and that's, this is the thing, it's, it's simply that realizes so the, um, it. yeah, yeah. the amount of thinking you have to do, and the amount of times you're likely to get in a 1v2 situation and have to outplay it, makes you so much better of a player. I went from probably being, if you want to talk Call of Duty terms, um, from being like a 1.5 KD player in like multiplayer to being like a 2.5 KD player just by really hammering down and getting better in, in that 2v2 mode. So I think it's going to be a great addition to the game. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited for him. Thank you for doing that detour because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Yeah, interested. you're welcome. It's um, a good pivot. Good pivot. But no, that's all the perhaps other thing I want to talk about. Anything you've got spurring on your mind that you want to you wanna touch on? No, I, I do feel that we're in this uh, weird hiatus right yes, now. Yes, we'll yes, yes. The next um, it, it def this hiatus, this limbo, has definitely been more prevalent than some yeah. of our past ones. I don't know why, uh, though. Yeah, I don't know why either, because the the, the, the timing lines up. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, and it's only because uh, I'm, I'm very eager. Last show, we talked about when the patch would hit. Yes. And my prediction for this week, your predictions were the following week. Do you still hold that as you believe uh, the following week? So I what so I have been saying like this. I, this is what I've, I've been saying. I've actually moved to, to your prediction as well. I, I've, I've been saying that I think it's going to be the, the, this week, um, just yep. based on time scale. But you know what got me thinking otherwise, right? Is the okay. Hollows map reveal? Mm -hmm. Pretty hair said, and in next week's um, this week in Rogue Company. This week, this yeah. week, okay. this next week's this week, okay, which is going to be this Friday's one, we'll talk okay. about balancing changes, and that to me means that the update will not come out before that. Potentially, I wonder if that was recorded. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll have to see. Maybe that, uh, so that was something I noticed when I was watching that. I was like, ah, ooh, we'll see, right. we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm still holding for this week. I, I'm uh, gonna, I'm gonna agree with you. It kind of needs to be because I want to shoot people with Seeker's bow. And last week's episode, I had said the fact of high res can't sit on their hands for more than a week. Like no. when it's made public and mm -hmm. like a PTS, it's like it's always coming soon. Yeah, because they just ah, uh, it's like yeah, yeah. Do you know? Do you know what it might be why this hate is so bad? I think the secret update on PTS was so polished, and there's so much oh, change, and there's so like for me from considering. <laughs> Huge patch. It is a huge patch, and there's a lot of content, which means there's a lot to grab your hands on. There's a massive demo changes that make it feel redundant to play the game now because you know how big it's going to change in in a yeah. week or so. You got Seeker who felt really good. I honestly like he felt better than Kestrel did, but felt than Seeker did. You got to play them, which was a big thing. I think the PTS ran well. You got to play all yeah. the rogues. The new map was heavy in rotation. You know, it wasn't just like you could only play this map in the new game mode. It was it was rotation. They just bumped up the percentage, which was great. I think the amount of polish that was in the PTS and the amount of fun I had on it as well compared to other PTS. And maybe it's the fact of some of the people I was playing with, but I feel like I just want it now. And I really want to shoot people in the head with Seeker's bow. Like, I'm not going to lie. So, it's fine. This is kind of getting back to what we said previously, oh. but I'm, I'm interested the demo games now going to nine yes. uh, are going to give you now more experience, yes. which are going to possibly help you. My guess is they haven't altered the amount of experience needed for every level. So no. now your longer time in demo. So yeah. demo may very well give you more experience in order to level. Yeah. I think it would be the same thing. I think if you can extend a demo game to eight, nine, it'll yep. be, it'll be the way other yep. than that. You probably want a three O strikeout stomp. Is gonna be the way. Yeah, is the yeah, way that you're yeah. gonna to want to balance that. It's because you'll probably get like now like twenty games of strike game before you get the one demo game finished. Because it's gonna be long. <laughs> it's gonna be long. Yeah. I kind of really just want to push Solo Q to Rogue like now and just do it yeah. before I have to deal with yeah. that. Like imagine, yeah. imagine the reverse sweep. So imagine you eight o a team go into the next half and have to sit through nine rounds of yourself getting stomped, or even oh, just what? yeah, even just sitting through nine rounds of getting stomped. Honestly, like yeah. Well, when are, are they gonna have the rotations at the same time at at six like when you change no it'll be eight size? no because they added two yeah. rounds per half is what they said yeah, so, 
yeah, wow. So that's gonna be eight, that could be a rough. That could, it could be rough when you switch sides. Eight, yeah. eight rounds. And so, so you got to come up with like two more strategies in theory, unless you want to like run the same play every time or multiple times. You have to do like you know more strategies have to come involved. I said I, I think I think when that comes out and everyone gets the time yeah. to get their hands on it, that'll be a really good discussion point for us and the economy. Because this is the one annoying thing about the PTS is nobody played demo. No one played it. I played one game of demo and it was a four v four custom. <laughs> And that was it. Yeah. Um, and you can't really test the economy like that because all the economy is demo focused, not not assault and strikeout focused. You can't test the round difference because you're not playing demo. So I think when we see that, that's going to be the real kicker of, of what we will do. And I think you know we'll have a great discussion about that to, uh, going go, going forward uh, when when that initially drops. Um, so yeah, it might might even be worth like playing some. And what would you do on your Thursday stream? Sort of like with viewers, customs with viewers. Your, yeah, do whatever. You got to do we'll, well see. we'll see yeah i mean it officially comes out on a wednesday yeah so if... uh, on a wednesday which would work <laughs> out well which is yeah newer games maybe we can make it work we can, we can make, it, make work. it work we'll, we'll jump in we'll play some we'll, we'll, we'll right. get the vibes going before our next, our next recording of this but yeah that'll be the end of uh, this recording guys i want to thank everybody for watching if you want to check out more from us both my channels and octane's channels on twitch youtube and all the others are going to be linked down into the description you can also check this podcast out in audio format on spotify or itunes no development on that yet but it will be no this stage week, so. nice there we go we have stitches on the uh, list this week um yes and then uh google play store will be on there after that perfect perfect well, we want to thank you all for watching and until next time have a fantastic day